Welcome back everybody. We got another video here for you. I'm going to do what is hopefully an improvement on a piece of gear that I have right now. For those of you that don't know, I play in two different bands. I play in an original band and I play in a cover band. My focus recently has been on the cover band. We've been doing quite a few gigs and stuff like that. So with the cover band, one of the things that we try to do is to have as little bit of gear as possible. We have a full PA that we bring to the gigs and our goal is to try to not have all these amps and all these different things that we have to set up. We want to try to set up as little bit as possible because after a long night of playing, really don't want to be carrying 412 cabinets and stuff like that out of the gig. It's bad enough carrying out all the PA equipment and that sort of thing, but for our instruments, we try to have as little bit as possible. Uh, we all run direct right into the PA, so we really don't bring any amps, uh, cabinets, or anything like that. I do that for the original gigs, carrying big amps and the whole setup and everything like that. But for the cover band, we try to do as little as possible. So running direct, I'm using an older Boss GT Pro. The thing is really cool, actually. It's it's probably, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe something like that. I don't remember when exactly it came out. Um, but I've just started using it recently. Again, it's an older model, but it works really well. It's got all kinds of Boss effects and stuff like that programmed into it already. Right now, my setup is my pedal board runs into the Boss GT Pro, and then that runs into the PA. But one of the features of the Boss GT Pro is you can set everything up manual to be used with a MIDI foot controller so that you can have all your switches uh, turn on your distortions and different effects and things so you don't have to have all these pedals on a pedal board. Well, the MIDI controller that I have is a Behringer uh, FCB 1010. I'm not really a fan of Behringer products and I've been trying to work with this foot controller but programming this thing is horrible. It is a pain in the butt. I have not really been able to get it to work with the manual mode so that I can select the different effects individually. It selects the different banks and presets just fine, but programming this thing is bad. It is really a pain in the neck. I haven't really been able to get it figured out to make it do what I want to do. Now, I, I haven't really used this foot controller too much. Um, mainly because of the programming issue, but I really can't speak to the durability on it. Um, it's a Behringer, uh, not really one of my favorite brands, as a, a lot of people, but it does work, and hopefully I'm gonna try to make this work with my rig and see if, see if it really can be used. A Little bit of searching around online, I found out that you can get replaceable chips for the inside of these foot controllers that really improve the usability and programmability of this. Looking around online, I found a company called Eureka Sound that makes a new chip that actually gives this thing a mode that works with the Boss GT Pro and a lot of other multi-effects units, uh, the 11 rack and, and a, a handful of other ones. I don't remember all the names right now. but. It actually gives you a mode where it has a lot of all the programming done for you so you don't have to mess with it. So I went online, ordered it up, the chip came in the mail, we're going to get this thing installed. So this is how it comes packaged, just a little padded bubble envelope here and inside we have one little paper that has the chip mounted to it, a little bag and a bunch of labels so that you can relabel your different patches and things on this pedal board. So we're going to get this chip installed see how this thing works. I'm not going to cover a bunch of the functionality that this chip gives. Basically this video here I want to just do the install, get everything working, and then I'll spend some time doing the programming and getting everything set up and hopefully we'll do a part two video and showing you guys some of the features and functionality of this new chip. So let's install it. Printed instructions are not included with this chip when you purchase it. They do email you a copy, and that's what I have right now. I've just got the copy of it brought up here on the iPad, uh, just as a reference. Not really a whole lot of specific things that you need to do. First step is to remove all these screws on the back of this board. 
I'd like to apologize now in case you hear any equipment beeping or anything like that in the background. I'm doing a little bit of road work right up the road from the house and got this constant beeping of heavy equipment. One thing I'd like to point out when you're removing these screws, there's two different lengths. Try to pay attention to which hole the shorter screws came out of. Once you get the last screw out of there, just carefully take the bottom panel and flip it over. There's no need to disconnect this ground wire. Laying it on the table just like that is just fine. So I got the camera readjusted here. Right here is the prom that we're gonna replace. I've got the new one out of the packaging. It's in this nice little piece of foam to protect all the pins. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in there until we're ready to install this new one. What we need to do first is remove all this hot glue. I've got hot glue in there to, I guess, to help hold this old chip in place. So I just wanna carefully get in there, get that old glue out of there. Just be really ca careful, cautious, take your time. Now we're just going to take a little screwdriver and get it right under the chip, not the socket. You got to get it right under the chip and pry it up just a little bit. Do the same on both sides and we'll just work this thing up out of there. Just a little bit at a time on each side. Be careful working around these other components. You don't want to damage anything. To get it worked up all the way, and pop that out. Now on this chip, there's a little half moon shape. You want to pay attention to what side of the board you're working on. The half moon shape is pointing to the right side of my board, so that's the way I want to reinstall the new one. Now I'm going to take my new Eureka sound chip, line it up with the half moon to the right. I'm going to line it up over the socket very carefully. Make sure you get it lined up perfect before you push that thing down in there. All right, I've got it all, all the pins started down in the hole. Everything's straight. Now we're just going to push it down into place. According to the instructions, there's no need to go back through and put any hot glue on there. Again, like the instructions say, unless you really want to play with hot glue. Now I can just flip the back panel back into place. Be careful not to pinch the ground wire. And reinstall all of the screws. Don't leave any out. Sometimes you get in a hurry and you really don't want to install all the screws. And something gets lost. and. Take the time, reinstall them all. The six longer screws go on the six outside holes that hold the end piece together. All the shorter ones go in the middle, just in case you weren't paying attention when you took it apart. You got your six holes here that take the longer screws. All the other holes take the little short screws. Once you have all your screws reinstalled, we're done. According to the instructions, that is all you need to do to replace this chip inside the FCB 1010. The next step, they say to install all the stickers that are included with it. I'm not going to do that just yet because I don't know exactly where I want them and which ones I'm going to use. Now all that's left to do is to power this up after you connect it to your effects box, your MIDI device, and go through the setup process that is included in the instructions. I'm not gonna do that right now. I don't have my effects box out here anyway. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna spend some time playing with this thing. I'm really hoping that this improves the functionality of this FCB 1010 MIDI foot controller. It would be kind of nice to be able to use that instead of bringing a big pedal board and uh, have a little bit less stuff to set up hopefully at the gigs. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate your support and be looking for part two of this where I can hopefully show you some of the functionality. I uh, probably won't be doing the video out here in my little shop. Probably be doing that in the house 
or maybe at band practice or something like that. We can go through some of the functions that this thing allows you to have. Uh, so again, the Behringer FCB 1010, we replaced the prom inside that with a prom from Eureka Sound. Uh, pretty inexpensive and uh, really fast shipping. Man, I was super impressed. I think their website said a week or two uh, for delivery, but I had it within days. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so pretty impressed with that so far. Look, again, looking forward to trying this out. Look for it in an upcoming video. Thanks a lot for watching.